Congrats on buying a DIY simulator. My name is Derek and I'm going to teach you how to uh, construct this TrackMan DIY simulator. The first thing to do is identify the footprint and where it's going to be located within your space. The enclosure is 11 feet wide, 9 feet tall, and 5 feet deep. Here we have a great garage, uh, but we do have some shelving in the back and that will prohibit the height here. Uh, the rest of the height is 11 feet, so my enclosure is going to go right in front of this extend out five feet, and then go up to nine feet. Uh, you probably need a minimum height of nine feet three inches because you do have to get over that enclosure to push down on that top ceiling protection footprint. Um, the other thing is your hitting mat. Um, here we do have a wall here. I am right-handed. So we do need to move this hitting mat slightly off of this wall to allow for swing clearance. About seven and a half feet off of an obstacle is an ideal dimension. Um, here, like if you do have a great center strike bay, if you're a right-hander, you could move this here, and then your target line would be directly on the center of the footprint. But here, we're not going to tape anything down because we do need to move this uh, to get off of this wall. But then a lefty could have a center strike target line. As you see here, I have laid out bags one and two, the depth profiles and the vertical profiles. It's very important that the depth profiles have all the tabs pointing in the inward direction. If you have them on the outside, the cage won't go up uh, correctly. So make sure these tabs are pointed inward. So now we have the completed rectangles ready to go. These are actually the side uh, walls of the enclosure. So we're gonna raise them vertically like this. This is when you're gonna need a partner to help you um, lean this uh, rectangle against the wall or you know a different wall because now we're going to start connecting the width profiles and the enclosure is actually going to start getting raised vertically. As you can see we're on step four of the manual we have gone vertical with the sidewalls of the enclosure. Uh, during that step you definitely need a second set of hands uh, to help you keep the side um, upright as you screw in the set screws for the bottom width connector. So I already have the bottom width connector screwed in the set screws. We're actually on the bottom of this joint, so you have to lift up a little bit, tighten on the bottom. Um, but now the structure's starting to hold some shape, and we're gonna go ahead and connect the two width top uh, profiles. We're connecting the top screen profile it's very important that the fabric is pointed at two o'clock. And this is as if you were on the right exterior looking at the enclosure. If you're on the left exterior, it will be 10 o'clock. But you need to make sure this seam is pointed in the right direction so you get the correct projected image height. If your profile isn't pointed in the right direction, all you have to do is loosen your set screw and rotate until the fabric is pointed in the right direction. I've connected the overhead carpet to the rear profile and worked the tension out starting from the middle, going to the left, and then to the right. If you still see some wrinkles, you can also work the tension of the overhead carpet starting from the front and going on the exterior side, and then going to the other side, starting from the front, then working your way to the back. Now that we have the overhead looking really nice, we're on step six on the manual. Uh, this is where we tension the cables and this will create the frame for the screen mounting hardware. Um, you're going to connect the turnbuckle on the bottoms and then there's two clevises that come within the hardware box and you're going to attach the turnbuckle to the clevis and the hook. And I'll show you how to tighten this turnbuckle now. You're going to want the turnbuckle facing the exterior of the frame and to tighten the turnbuckle you're going to have to grab on the top eyelet and rotate clockwise, and you want the tension of the cable to be as taut as a guitar string. We've rolled the screen connection flap over the top cable once it's tensioned, and now we want to confirm the height of this Velcro the bottom is at 84, so right now we're at about 83 and a half, but that's okay because we have a whole inch of variance uh, for the screen height, so we are good with our screen height. You're going to want to locate the elbow carpet pieces that are located within the hardware box, and they're applied to the two front elbow pieces of the enclosure. 
you're going to want the U-shape facing the inside, and you're going to wrap around the carpet on the vertical profile, adhere the Velcro, and then the top will loop around, Velcro on the inside, and then Velcro on the top. Now we're ready to mount the impact screen. As you see, I already have it set up, and it's imperative that you have these bottom bungees below this depth profile. So they have to start here, and it's easier if you work with a buddy and start from the bottom and connect these bungees, working your way up simultaneously on each side. Then once you get all the bungees connected, you're going to connect the screen to the top Velcro of the carpet, and you want the top of the impact screen to line up with the top of the Velcro on the carpet. In the middle, we have these blue markers, and you're going to want to sh make sure that the blue markers are aligned, and that's identifying the center of your enclosure. Now we're going to apply the right carpet fabric. It's important that you align the seam of the carpet on the back side of this profile. And what you're going to do is you're going to loop the carpet fabric on the inside of this cable, loop it around, and then it's going to come all the way out and reattach to this rear profile. I'll get into how to work out the tension in a second, but this is how the fabric is constructed around the enclosure. Now that we've attached the right carpet to the rear profile, it's sitting pretty well. But if there are wrinkles, you can work the tension out of the carpet by starting on the screen side, working from the screen, moving towards the end of the vertical profile, and then all the way around. And to, to work the tension out, you're just lifting up on the Velcro, pulling towards the front, and just smoothing everything out. As so. Now we're on step 11, where we're attaching the top trim piece. The top trim piece will come with butterfly Velcro to attach to the top trim piece. This piece of the Velcro is applied behind the tension cable here. It's helpful to have a partner push pressure down on the top carpet to apply the Velcro. If you don't have a partner, you can also use a long 2x4 or 2x6 to get weight down so you can apply up. Um, also, it is helpful if you apply the bottom trim just below the bottom Velcro just to get it out of the way um, and it makes the application a little easier. Now you locate the side trim pieces. You'll notice that one side has Velcro running from top to bottom and one side only has Velcro for about a foot and a half. The side with the long Velcro will go on the side of the enclosure. So here's the long side of the Velcro. I'm going to go ahead and fold it in half and then line up the edge of the trim piece with the edge of the impact screen. And then I fold and then I connect the full Velcro at about a 45 degree angle to the side carpet. We're on step 13, which is the rebound baffled flap. You're going to want to make sure your Velcro is applied to the front of that profile. It's going to loop down, and then you're going to attach to the top trim piece. Right where that butterfly Velcro is, you're applying the Velcro to the underside of the front-facing butterfly Velcro. Now that I've finished the enclosure, it's time to hook up the electronics. I've already unboxed the projector, and I've plugged in the power cable and the HDMI from the projector to the laptop that's going to be running the software. Uh, it's imperative that the lens of the projector at least has to be 12 feet 2 inches from the screen. It can go farther back, but the farther back it goes, the more shadowing you introduce. So around 12 feet 2 inches to, I would say, 13 is really where you want to be. Um, and once you get it powered up, you're going to want to Make sure you, you focus the projected image and zoom the projector all the way out. And now I'm going to show you how to really calibrate the projector. In order to calibrate the projector, I need to change the resolution on the computer. I will right click, go into the NVIDIA control panel, and here I have the resolutions listed. 
I'm going to want to scroll down to the native 1024 by 768 resolution and click apply. Now you're definitely going to want to click yes to make sure the settings are saved. I've changed the resolution of the computer. The projected image is almost filling the impact screen. But to really calibrate, I can go into the menu of the projector on the remote, scroll over to setup, scroll down to general, which I'm in right now, and you can go, first you have to make sure the auto keystone feature is off, which it is, and then you can go into keystone, and then click into cornerstone, which is going to allow you to grab the left, the right, the bottom left and the bottom right corner of the image.